Right, hello everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, so today we're in this 2005 Citroen Berlingo with the 1.6 petrol engine. And the problem with this car is uh, not so much an overheating problem, I suppose you, technically you'd call it more of a running hot problem. Uh, what happens is uh, normally on these cars the temperature should sort of like stay around sort of 90 degrees sort of in the middle there. Uh, but what happens with this one is particularly if it's just sort of left idling or it's in sort of slow stop start start sorry slow stop start traffic uh, the temperature keeps going up it doesn't go all the way up to the red but it, it gets to about what would be 110 uh, as you can see uh, each one of these kind of segments represents 10 degrees so it tends to keep going up till it gets to about 110 and then at that speed, the, the then at that temperature or around that temperature, the engine fan kicks on at really high speed, uh, and then it kind of cools down a little bit, and then you know the cycle continues uh, from you know at around that kind of temperature. When it when it's being driven, if it's being driven sort of like lightly on an open road, then it sort of like comes back down to around about the ninety degree mark. But as I say, in sort of when it's left idling or slow stop start traffic that's what happens now uh, just to clarify th these cars do also suffer from a, a similar but different problem where the t the gauge might shoot straight up to the red and then the and then the engine uh, fan will come on at full speed again uh, but that's actually a slightly different or a different problem the, that problem as far as I'm aware is generally due to the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor being faulty or the wiring to it being faulty uh, so that's uh, if you've got that problem that's not what this video is about what this video is about is the cooling fan resistor which i i believe to be faulty on this car so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, in this video and hopefully fixing uh, right so what i've got here is just a very basic drawing of how the, how the cooling system on this car works so uh, cooling system on this car, as, as with most modern cars, is controlled by the engine computer. And uh, when the engine computer wants the uh, the fan to work at a at a um, low speed, it um, it switches on this relay, which effectively powers the uh, the cooling fan through this resistor. And some of the voltage from from the battery is reduced as it goes through this resistor, so the the fan motor operates at a reduced speed. When it, when the computer wants the fan to work at a full at the full speed, uh, it uh, it powers this relay here, and uh, this relay just powers the cooling fan directly at full voltage, so it works at high speed. So uh, suspicion on this car is that this resistor is blown. So uh, what we're going to go and do next is take it out, uh, have a look and check it, uh, have a look and a check of it. Uh, right, I have to apologise, I'm afraid I very stupidly went and deleted the footage of me taking the resistor out. Um, I haven't got time to shoot it again, but essentially it's a matter of like taking the uh, the grill off the top, then removing some of the screws off the uh, top of the bumper, kind of unclipping the side of the bumper, and the resistor is actually just there. That's actually now the new one that I've already just put back in there. So I'm afraid the video overall is going to be a little bit disjointed because um, I'm going to slice this bit into back into um, me saying I'm going to take it out and all that sort of stuff. So apologies about that. I just stupidly somehow deleted it. But anyway, hope hope the information is still helpful to you. Right. So here's the old resistor, and on this one you can actually just tell from visual inspection that it's completely burnt out anyway. Uh, but of course, when when these sorts of things fail, they don't always fail in such a way that's uh, in a way that's so obvious visually. So I'm just going to show you how how you can test it if if it's not so obvious from a visual inspection. So here I've just put like a, a cheap uh, basic uh, um, volt voltmeter ohmmeter type thing. So I'm going to set it on a uh, on like a low ohm scale to measure resistance. So uh, so at the moment, for example, it's indicating one to which is like an open circuit. If I touch these together, it gives me a, a, a value of the resistance of just going through the the wires. Basically, just uh, oops, what's going on? Just a very low resistance. So um, if I um, is that working all right? 
yeah, it is always good to double check the thing you're using to measure what you think what you're trying to measure is working. Okay, so uh, this is the new one here, by the way. So if, if I test across uh, uh, pin uh, pin one to three on the new one, uh, but it doesn't matter which way around you do this, or you know, resistance you can measure measure either way. But if I measure from pin one to three you can see that there's a resistance value there, a low resistance value. The important thing is not really what that value is, but more that there's continuity across the, uh, the circuit, which there is. Uh, if I test the burnt out one, same test, you can see that it's, it's still showing op open circuit basically, so that there's no continuity there. So again, when you're testing, just make sure you've got a good connection, but there's definitely no, no continuity there. And just as a comparison, the, the new one again, that's what you got. Now just bear in mind that this test it would, uh, it would not give a, uh, a false positive, uh, i.e. If if you if if you did that measurement and you know you've got no continuity there, then that that would that means that the thing that you're testing is definitely faulty, uh, but it can give a false negative, I suppose, in the sense that you're testing the circuit unloaded. So, if if it, it, you it, because it's unloaded, you could actually have a situation where you have got continuity because it's not loaded. So just because this this test says it's okay it doesn't mean it's definitely okay but if the test says that it's bad it's definitely bad if i can put it that way so hope that might be helpful uh, right so that new uh, resistor is in now and uh we, i've just ran the castle right right up to temperature uh as, as you can see it's sort of reading sort of just slightly over 90 uh, at the moment uh, I, I think that's actually could be because it's a little bit low on coolant but uh i can confirm that the uh the fan is now cutting in uh, at the slow at the low speed uh, around that kind of temperature uh, and it's definitely not getting hotter than that so uh, as far as the problem goes that's a fix so um, uh, thank you for watching and I hope the information here was helpful to you uh, if it was uh, we'd be very grateful for if you can support the channel in, in whatever way you can and uh, hopefully that will enable us to uh, bring, a, bring you more videos uh, which can uh, sort of help you again in the future so um, thank you for watching bye bye